Welcome to the MPhil in Gender and Women's Studies. I'm Dr Claire Tabbott. I'm Assistant Professor in Gender and Women's Studies here at the Centre for Gender and Women's Studies at Trinity. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about the MPhil and what it offers. So one of the first questions is why study Gender and Women's Studies? And I think one of the really exciting things about the course is how interdisciplinary it is, how it allows students to take a broad approach across a number of disciplines within the humanities, but to really focus on some of the kind of key issues key contemporary issues and debates that are, you know, sort of so much to the fore at the moment. So if you are at all interested in the way that sexism, homophobia, transphobia are playing such a big role in contemporary society, in the way that political movements are instrumentalising those, in how women are treated within society, in the ways that masculinity gets treated within society, in how sexuality, in the way that gender gets treated. All of these things are approached by gender and women's studies. It's a way of thinking about some of these really big ideas, thinking about theories, thinking about specific studies, and combining these political and activist interests with the latest scholarship. So there's a lot of students who've perhaps worked in sort of areas looking at gender or at women's rights, students who have perhaps been really galvanised by mo movements such as Repeal the Eighth or Me Too, people who have been part of campaigns such as equal marriage campaigns, um, people who are interested in queer rights and a course like Gender and Women's Studies allows for the combination of these interests with this sort of latest interdisciplinary scholarship. So at the Centre for Gender and Women's Studies at Trinity you have a centre that has a really long history Going back to 1988, when what was then the Centre for Women's Studies was first founded. So there's a rich history of work coming out of Trinity and scholarship from here. By studying at Trinity, you have access to the excellent research facilities that Trinity offers. So in particular, you have access to the library, which has an unrivaled collection of books, both physical and importantly online, and access to a massive range of journal articles. You also have access to archives, to early printed books. There's a lot there and a lot of support to help students with their research. One of the really striking things about the course at Trinity is its focus on the arts and humanities. So the Centre for Gender and Women's Studies sits within the School of Histories and Humanities. And whereas internationally, quite a lot of um, gender and women's studies programmes are focused more on the social sciences. We really pride ourselves at Trinity in being focused on humanities aspects of gender and women's studies. So while there's certainly room for studies that touch on social sciences and we always have a number of students who are interested in social sciences, our real expertise and strength lies in that focus in the humanities. So my background is in bringing history and ideas of, um, sort of 
historicization of gender and sexuality to the course and my colleague Dr Catherine Lawless her background is very much in art history and thinking about ideas of representation and how women have been portrayed in the past. So we have this expertise and strength within the humanities. So in terms of what the course offers, what you will study, there is a core course, Gender Theories, and that really provides a basis for the theoretical grounding of what you're doing and it covers a whole range of ideas from intersectionality to queer theory to questions of the male gaze and gaze theory as well as the core course there are a number of optional modules that students can take and these change from year to year but typically there are options from history, from art history, from philosophy and political theory, religion, peace studies, classics, literature. So you get the idea that this is very much a course that allows you to pursue an interest in the humanities broadly through this lens of gender. And we give you specific training in research skills to really help prepare you for the dissertation and it is the dissertation as with I think many master's programmes that is one of the most exciting elements of the course for many students. The dissertation is an opportunity for students to do their own original research. So writing a dissertation of up to 20,000 words on a topic of interest to you. And we get a whole variety of different topics. So to give you a bit of an idea of the possibilities of what you might do your dissertation on, although really this is only just a sense of what people have done over the last few years, it really is very open as to what you can do. Within the last few years there have been dissertations on gendered experiences of clubbing in Dublin. Um, we had a dissertation on feminist approaches to neoliberalism and the politics of space in Dublin's inner city. Uh, there was a dissertation on working motherhood in Ireland one on how different translations of Ovid's Metamorphosis cast women in different ways, another on Islam and women's dress in Guinea, another on trans representations in culture and their effects on trans masculinity um, and people's identities in Ireland, and another on LGBT representation in Indian film. So just within that small snapshot, you have a sense of, I think, the breadth of different topics from classics, um, from more sort of political um, and social topics, um, from topics that are focusing more on Dublin, on Ireland, to topics focusing much further afield. There really is the scope for students to pursue the topic about which they're passionate and we can provide support in doing that. So in terms of who our students are, some of our students have studied gender studies at undergraduate level, but I really want to stress that the majority have not. It's not a hindrance if you have not specifically studied gender studies before. We're able to strike a really good balance of those who have prior knowledge and those who don't. It really is a case of being able to get students together to focus on a topic about which they really care. We typically have a mix of home and international students and we also attract students of 
all ages. So some students who are coming straight from their undergraduate studies, some students who are returning to study after time out, um, whether it be for careers or for family commitments, and something that really brings a good dynamic to our classes is this diverse mix of students from different backgrounds bringing different perspectives to the discussions who are able to kind of bring in their own take on the issues at hand. So there's a full-time version of the MPhil and also a part-time version. The part-time students do the same courses, same modules as the full-time students, but they spread their learning over two years. And in terms of what our students go on to achieve after the MPhil, there's a whole range of different destinations for our students. Um, there are a number of students who go on to work for or indeed found uh, NGOs. There are students working in academia, a number of students who are going to sort of go on to further study, students in journalism, research, local government, social work. There's a whole range of different possibilities open to people on the basis of such an MPhil. It gives you those critical skills, it gives you theoretical training, it shows that you are able to deal with difficult ideas, to produce your own work, it is a great grounding for a wide variety of different further destinations. So that is the MPhil in Gender and Women's Studies. Thank you.